My name is Ian Cable. I work at the Environment Agency, but um, today I am here in my capacity as a coordinator for the Collective for Climate Action. We are the hosts of the largest or the widest cross-government climate community in the UK, the Cross Government Climate Hub, and we host that in partnership with um, UKRI Business Connect and also GovNews. It's a community to help people to um, better address the climate and biodiversity crisis by sharing their knowledge, their questions, their answers, their connections um, in any way possible to um, help people find out what's going on more effectively and help them do their jobs basically and build ambition, resilience um, and momentum into the climate and biodiversity work that needs to be done around the public sector in the UK. It's not just about work. Um, we also know that anyone in this space will have had times when they're really worried about the direction we're travelling in and um, it's very much a space for people to share how they feel. We have live sessions where people can talk um, to several other individuals, we do that a couple of times a month or you can join coffee and chat sessions in the community as well where it's just you and one other person um, just to talk to other people who are going through this and working on this um, and share any thoughts that you might have. Um, in ways that you may not be able to with members of your family or your friends. Um, so well-being is a really important part of our community. And we also try to elevate good ideas um, and work that's already going on. And that's one of the reasons why we're hosting this event today um, with the Climate Ambassadors Project. Um, and when we think about the situation we're in, um, it becomes ever more pertinent to do this kind of work. Or to help others do this kind of work. Um, if any of you have seen the recent TED talk that Johan Rockström did um, in the last couple of months, you'll have been reminded of the increasing level of desperation that we see um, in the capacity that the biosphere has to sustain us going forward with the pressures we're putting on it. Um, we're in a very difficult situation and um, volunteering really is one of the, the few ways that we can genuinely make an additive, positive difference um, in this space. The reason why volunteering is so important as well is because if we're doing it because we're getting paid to do it, then the reality is, is we're not really the ones making that difference. The difference was made by the person who secured the funding for the role that you're currently doing. If you were to leave that role, then they would find someone else to do that job, possibly as well, maybe even better than you're doing it today. But there are ways that you can use your knowledge, your experience and your connections to actually make an additive positive difference in this area. And the Climate Ambassadors Project is a really excellent way to do that. Now, some of you may have heard Heath Ledger in the Batman movie talk about how if you're good at something, then never do it for free. But I would argue that if you want to make a difference on something, then maybe consider not doing it for a paycheck. Now, if you want to join the community, then please do the links are in the show notes, but I'm not going to talk any more other than to say um, there are some really inspiring people behind this work in the Climate Ambassadors Project. Um, and Charlotte, Jane and Juanita are among them. Um, I'm going to let them tell you how you can use your skills, knowledge and enthusiasm to help schools to build their climate resilience, reduce their carbon footprint, help people in schools and pupils in schools to understand the climate and biodiversity crisis more effectively and act on it more effectively too. Thank you so much, Ian, and thank you for all your help coordinating and organising this afternoon's session. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's so lovely to see such a, a, a group this afternoon as we introduce the Climate Ambassador programme um, as part of a suite of initiatives that have been commissioned by the Department for Education to help education settings through from early years through to universities engage with sustainability and climate work and make progress on it. Um, as Ian said, we will um, be taking questions and answers throughout. So do use the Q&A function uh, within Teams uh, to, to log your questions. If there's any we don't get to, then we commit to kind of 
writing up the responses and sharing those as part of the follow-up from today's call. Similarly, you'll get access to a recording, you'll get access to um, the slides and a number of links as well that we'll be sharing throughout. So don't worry too much about your note taking, we'll do some of that work for you um, so that you've got what you need after the call. In terms of what we're going to be covering today, um, it's quite well rounded, I would say. So we're going to start with an introduction from the Department for Education, who's going to talk a little bit about the work being done with regards to sustainability and climate. And we're really delighted to have Juanita join us um, for that introduction. And then we're going to look specifically at the Climate Ambassadors Scheme. So both what the scheme is, but also who are Climate Ambassadors and what support are they providing for education settings. We'll also provide a review, quite a high level review of other projects and programmes that Climate Ambassadors sits alongside um, and how we work together. And then critically, I think we want to discuss how to get involved. And that might be as a volunteer climate ambassador. And Ian, thank you so much for your really compelling kind of call to action there. Um, but it might be actually through your work that you see ways to join the work that you're doing in your role with the work that the scheme's doing across the country. So there, there'll be different ways that you can connect with us um, after the session too. So I'm now going to whistle stop tour, introduce um, ourselves, but I'd love to find out who's in the call too. So perhaps you could use the chat function to just tell us a little bit about who you are, what your role is, where in the country you are, just so we can get a picture of the, the 60 people joining us this afternoon. Um, my name's Charlotte Bonner. My day job is that I'm CEO at EAUC with the Environmental Association for Universities and Colleges. So a membership organisation for 300 odd post-16 education organisations across the country. And I have the pleasure and the privilege of being the co-lead of the Climate Ambassadors Programme alongside my partner partner in crime, Andrew Charlton Perez from the University of Reading. Um, Jane, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, good. Um, good. It is the afternoon. Good afternoon, mm -hmm. everyone. Um, I'm Jane Dixon. I work with Charlotte at EAUC. I'm also Climate Ambassadors Partnerships Manager. And I'll be talking to you more about those opportunities for collaborative work on the project. Fantastic. Thank you, Jane. And Juanita, you're next on the agenda. Um, we're going to go straight over to you to look at the Department for Education's climate and sustainability ambitions. So perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself as we kick off. Sure will. Thank you so much. And thank you to you and Ian for inviting me here today to give you a very short overview of uh, where this work has all come from, really. So my name is Juanita Shepherd, and I'm a policy lead um, in the sustainability support programme team here at the Department for Education. And if we can go to the next slide, please. So this is just, as I said, a, a, quite a, a short a snappy introduction to where all this work has come from. Um, we recognised quite a number of years ago, actually, that uh, we've got a big problem in terms of um, climate in uh, the public sector schools that we're responsible for. And we uh, have estimated that it's about a third of all public sector building emissions are coming from schools and universities. Um, we also know that there's a massive skills shortage now and in the future it's only going to get bigger in terms of um, jobs that are related to net zero and other green jobs and I know there's a difficulty around that definition um, but we are obviously responsible for the skills agenda in the country as well um, and again some very clever people work this out that by the 20, um, middle of the 2020s, so you know, roughly by next year, we're going to be um, 190,000 people short of what we need, and then by 2030, um, about 440,000 people short in those critical sectors that are going to help us to transition to net zero. Um, so, using that understanding, that education. Uh, in the UK can play a critical role in responding positively to climate change we knew that we could also inspire action on the international stage too. So what have we got at our disposal? So I'm going to throw some numbers at you here again as well. So we know that we've got about 16 million children, young people and adults uh, across the whole of the UK in education. 
and that in just England alone, uh, we've got 22,000 state schools uh, that we fund. And if you're into comparisons, that's roughly twice the size of Birmingham in terms of their estate, the land that they cover. And if you include the higher education sector, then that gives us an even more extensive area of land that we could actually, you know, make use of. Um, and then on top of that, uh, as Charlotte pointed out, you know, we are covering early years, we're covering the whole breadth of the education sector. So early years all the way through FE into higher education as well. So bearing that in mind, um, we drafted a, 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 a strategy that we presented at COP26. Do you remember all those years ago, 2021 in Glasgow? Um, and Obviously, lots of people had lots of opinions fed into it. And so finally, by April 2022, we were able to launch our Department for Education, Sustainability and Climate Change Strategy um, at the Natural History Museum. Um, and that strategy really helps to outline what we are doing to create um, hopefully a sustainable future through the education system and it also contains the vision that we would like to be a world leader in sustainability and climate change by 2030 and that strategy has um, been built informed by uh, stakeholders and really crucially I think um, and as a former teacher children and young people have had a voice in that as well and it sets out the action that we're going to take um, up to 2030 and those four areas that you can see on the side in front of you are the areas the strategy covers and um, the action that we take will also be evaluated um, and built on so that we can understand new opportunities and really get to grips with the evidence that comes forward to us as well. And the strategy um, also set out the initiatives that uh, you're going to hear about today. So um, National Education Nature Park, Climate Ambassadors, and also the Digital Support Hub for uh, Sustainability Support. Um, we're also incredibly proud of the fact that this is driving change internally. So in terms of all the school buildings that we're responsible for, new builds, um, we've got our first net zero school at Treetops uh, Greys in Essex that opened um, uh, just over two years ago now in 2022. We've also got plans for a, a Gen Zero college um, up in uh, uh, Ashington College campus. Um, and that's going, that's currently being designed to be as close as possible to carbon neutral in both construction as well as operation. So we're really sort of like trying quite innovative um, things here. Um, and as part and parcel of that, we are now committing to all school, uh, all new school buildings will be built to net zero as standard. And then if you've heard about our first ever biophilic school, which is St. Mary's um, uh, Academy in Derby, that opened uh, nearly a year ago. Um, and that's an incredible place. If you ever get to go and visit there, I would highly recommend it. And if you become a climate ambassador, you could maybe put them on your list of schools to go and visit. That's what I would recommend. Um, but that's a very, very brief overview of uh, what we're up to and where all the initiatives that you're going to hear about have come from. And as a volunteer in my local primary school, where I go and support them with the National Education Nature Park, I can thoroughly recommend that you get involved in any way, shape or form. It's the best part of my working week. Thanks ever so much. I'm going to uh, dip out here. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Juanita. Um, really helpful to have that that overview um, and to see how much work is being kind of hung from the sustainability and climate strategy of the DfE. So thank you so much for joining us. I know that you've got to go and skedaddle, but um, we'll let you know if there's any questions that crop up that come your way. So you've had reference to um, a few things, but before we cr crack on with content, we're going to just find out a little bit more about you. Thank you so much for all of your introductions in the chat. It is great to see so many people from different parts of the country with different roles from across government and the public sector. We'd just like to know a little bit more about your motivations for being here today. You may have used Slido or you might have used Mentimeter uh, in the past. It's quite a um, useful digital tool for, for gaining interactivity from an event like today. So on your screen, you can see a QR code. 
If you have a mobile phone to hand, then you can use that to scan the QR code. If you don't have a mobile phone to hand and you're on a laptop, then if you visit slido.com and put in the code that's on your screen, 2323822, you'll be able to take part in this poll. And as I can, we can see, people are already in, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and this will help Jane and I just tweak and tailor the content of today's webinar to focus on things that are most important to you. But it feels like we have a really mixed bag here, which is great in terms of motivation. So some people coming very much from a personal perspective because they want to play a role in the scheme. Um, other people feel that there might be opportunities for the organisation that they work for. Um, and we can see from the chat that that diversity um, of uh, organisations. And thank you so much uh, for putting the Slido link in the chat box there as well. So a really mixed bag here, which is great to see. Um, no one, um, nobody feels they're here under coercion either. There's nobody that said somebody's made you come along. So that's great that we're all here of our own free will. Um, and hopefully, given this diversity, what we have about to present um, will help you achieve some some of those some of those goals. Right, so let's dive in. Let's talk a little bit about the Climate Ambassadors Scheme itself. So as part of the Department for Education's um, expectations of education settings, and I'm going to use education settings rather than schools because we are talking about early years, we're talking about nurseries as well as schools, as well as multi-academy trusts, as well as some colleges. Um, the expectation is that all schools will have a climate action plan by the end of next year. And the Climate Action Plan is a detailed plan that enables an education setting to take stock of its sustainability initiatives and progress them. So it needs to be both structured and strategic. It encourages a whole setting approach. So not just looking at the bins and the light bulbs, but also looking at what's being done from a curriculum and education perspective. What does this look like culturally? What does this look like in terms of community relationships? What does this look like in terms of leadership? And it's not designed to duplicate any planning or action that's already taking place. So if a school already has a sustainability plan, they may not need to create a new climate action plan. It's about making sure that education settings have the right support to be able to develop their sustainability practice from where they're currently at, regardless of where they're currently at. And the four themes of a climate action plan, uh, very conveniently, are the ABCD. So adaptation and resilience, making sure that education settings are able to stay open and do the vital work that they do in a changing climate. Biodiversity, so how do we really enhance the uh, education sector estate to promote biodiversity? How do we increase people's connection to nature? How do we make sure that people have access to green and blue spaces to enhance their, their mental health, for example? Climate education and green careers. This feeds into some of the skills piece that Juanita just talked about. And decarbonisation, so that reduction of carbon emissions in terms of what the education setting is doing through its delivery on a day-to-day -day basis. And the way that climate ambassadors work is that we connect people, many of whom are on this call, so people like yourselves who you might notice there's a parallel here between some of the language in the Slido, but people that want to develop their own sustainability skills, that want to put their knowledge and skills into use practically in the real world, that want to make a genuine difference to their community, that want to inspire future generations. Climate Ambassadors offers them an opportunity to support education settings who need help to take action on climate and sustainability, whether that's broad help in terms of figuring out what this means and how to develop a climate action plan, or whether that's specific help in terms of we know we need to do this thing as part of our climate action plan, but we don't know how to progress it. So that's what Climate Ambassadors offer. It offers a brokering between skilled, trained, um, passionate and expert people with education settings that need support to deliver this work and to progress this work. The scheme is delivered um, through a partnership, um, through a whole consortium of partners. It's currently funded to cover England and we have a regional hub in each of the educational regions of England. And these are hosted by universities and research institutes, each of whom have really extensive experience in climate, 
in education, in community engagement, in change making. So we're able to tap into the expertise of those regional hubs to inform how we deliver the programme. But also those regional hubs role is to mobilise their local communities to ensure that the scheme's delivered in a way that's fit for purpose. And each hub is currently working with existing networks that, to help enable the programme to achieve its goal. Because really what's key here is that we're working to align and amplify what already exists, really collaborative in our approach, rather than trying to replicate or duplicate um, work inefficiently. So each of the nine regional hubs are supported by national partners who exist to provide the right infrastructure to make the programme work fundamentally. So this includes the digital infrastructure, which is used to recruit and match education settings for climate ambassadors, that's provided by STEM Learning. The training and mentoring that we're providing volunteer climate ambassadors, that's provided by Change Agents UK. The overall strategic direction of the project, that's provided by us here at EAUC, the Environmental Association for Universities and Colleges, as well as the University of Reading. And then the development of impactful engagement strategies, and we have some Marcom specialists in, in Hopscotch helping support the programme. But as well as the, the partners that are involved in the delivery of climate ambassadors, we also work within a well-coordinated ecosystem. And there are some formal sister projects. So Juanita mentioned the uh, National Education Nature Park, the Digital Support Hub, which is called Sustainability Support for Education, and Let's Go Zero, which is a campaign run by Ashton. But we're also working with multiple other organisations to make sure that this programme is delivered in keeping with the breadth of knowledge that's out there in terms of how to engage settings well, in terms of what good sustainability practice looks like. And I saw in the chat that some of our kind of informal partners are also on the call, so it's great to see you. We have been funded since January, and between January and June, we worked to kind of get all of our ducks in a row, so they're nice and neat, um, recruit the right people we needed into the project, set up some of the infrastructure and the pro project um, kind of systems. From June onwards, we've started to recruit ambassadors, volunteer ambassadors. And from last month, we've started to engage with education settings. So making sure we had the right supply and demand of, of ambassadors is really critical to us. So on the screen here, you can see some of the uh, events that were held at the end of September to launch the programme formally to the education system. Um, each regional hub held their own event. Some of those involved study tours, some of those involved workshopping activities. Um, and Minister Morgan, who's the minister within the education um, ministry who has responsibility for sustainability, also published um, a video kind of calling to action for the, for education settings to get involved, not just with climate ambassadors, but with that, that collective of sister projects too. So now I've told you a little bit about the, the project's infrastructure. I'm going to hand over to Jane, who's going to tell you what do climate ambassadors actually do and who are they? Thanks, Charlotte. Um, yes, so who are climate ambassadors and and what are we asking them to do so essentially as it's a volunteering program climate ambassadors work on activities that fit their interest enthusiasm and expertise and the role is about inspiring guiding developing relationships and um sharing as i said that enthusiasm it was really great to see that slido earlier and that seemed to be a lot lot of where your own motivation lies which is fantastic so some climate ambassadors have strong technical skills around climate and sustainability others are really effective communicators and can help education settings to get started engage staff and learners along the way <clears throat> and some examples could include supporting a nursery to improve the biodiversity <clears throat> well-being and learning potential of the their grey spaces advise a school on energy efficiency, illuminate careers, advising leaders and career services on the huge variety of green careers available and perhaps supporting learning um, and enriching the national curriculum um, with topics related to your own professional practice. Um, and essentially it's about in that area of kind of comfort, expertise, enthusiasm, um, and not about being an expert across all four areas of a climate action plan. That is absolutely not the expectation. Um, next slide, please, Charlotte. So who do we actually have as a climate ambassador at the moment? Um, we've got 
Um, we've got almost 600 climate ambassadors at the moment who are fully registered and um, are approaching the training at the moment. Um, even though we have um, STEM Learning as our recruitment partner um, in terms of um, having a very solid platform for recruitment, um, induction and safeguarding, um, the background as you know, you you will know from um, looking at um, the participants in the call today, they're not all from a STEM background at all. Um, sustainability, um, climate change um, encompasses such an enormous part of um, society and professional practice and so on. Um, so you may recall those four pillars of the climate action plan. They're holistic. They're taking in a whole institution approach. So we're looking for climate ambassadors from across the private, the public, charity and university sectors who want to put their sustainability knowledge, experience and enthusiasm to work. Um, you, your motivation for getting involved might be because you're a parent or carer who wants to support your own child's school. You might have a connection with a setting in your local community or just be really wanting to engage with um, more with um, a kind of an outreach, an outreach role, if you like. And what we ask of you is really that willingness to make a lasting connection with the education set, with the education setting and the wider community. Um, as I said, you don't have to be an expert across those four areas. And just to mention time commitment involved, um, it takes about an hour to register, do the induction programme and make the safeguarding check application through the STEM learning platform. Our introduction to climate ambassadors, climate change essentials and working on climate action plan, initial training bespoke to the project takes about two years. And then the expectation is that you volunteer a minimum of a day a year to the scheme. And you're very welcome to do more than that if you'd like. Um, as Ian said, you're kind of the volunteers are adding value really over and above what you might be doing in your in your paid role. Um, Jane, so I'm just going to interrupt you for one minute. How long does the training take in the stage? Because I think you said two years and that can't be right. <laughs> Two years? Did I say that? Gosh, We're not asking expect, for two years of your I'd life, expect a, I'd expect a really good certificate for two years. Two hours, is that what, that's what I meant. Um, so let's meet a climate ambassador. Um, as Charlotte mentioned, we're we're in quite early days of delivery um, at the moment. So we're kind of get, we're um, accumulating um, examples of practice more and more. Um, so there'll be kind of more broader examples as we as we develop through the project. So Paul is a parent governor with sustainability lead responsibilities at Much Wenlock in Shropshire. He's also a learning designer at the Open University and he's a climate ambassador. So he's supporting the development of the school's climate action plan and he speaks with the head teacher about priorities and in terms of planning activities, timelines and responsibilities and some of the priorities in the projects that Much Wenlock have been um, developing are around solar panel installation, waste reduction and embedding sustainability into curriculum using pupil centred approach. And actually much of Paul's work has involved signposting using resources from the Climate Ambassadors programme or one of our sister projects, which um, Charlotte is going to talk about shortly. Um, if we move on to the next slide. Um, but as I just mentioned there, we don't, we don't just sign you up and then throw you out there. Um, as Ian mentioned at the beginning, this what's interesting about this as a volunteering programme is that it offers a structured and supporting supported opportunity for engaging with volunteering um, within the education space. Um, we scaffold all climate ambassadors work with a broad range of training, resources and support that's free to access. Much of it is bespoke to the programme. We support professional development by offering a range of free, high quality training that covers climate change, working with education settings, understanding climate action plans, 
leadership skills development, carbon literacy and safeguarding. The training is live and online with lots of interaction and opportunities to ask questions. And an important part of this process is around um, safeguarding and a DBS check required as part of um, participation in the programme. Um, the next slide um, and climate ambassadors have access to a growing library of resources, background information, presentations, activity ideas, templates and worked examples, um, particularly with climate action plans so that you feel supported in going out there to um, support schools and meet the needs that they've articulated that they're looking to particularly focus on. And also on the next slide, um, connections are really important part of what we do. There's a supportive network at national and regional level, as well as online through the STEM platform. As Charlotte mentioned, we have nine regional hubs. They have a climate um, ambassador, um, a regional hub manager in that space. Um, and then we also have STEM delivery partners there supporting the climate ambassador community, facilitating networking, other opportunities and making those connections. Um, there's a space, dedicated space on the STEM learning platform. And also there's my role in the national team as partnerships manager as well. Um, and is it back to you, Charlotte, or is it still me? I think it's back it to you now. Back to me. I always feel like you're on regional TV when you say that. But over to you. So um, I can see a few questions coming in um, in the Q and A section. I can see a number of people posting um, to links for other organisations and other things that are operating within the sustainability space. They're so very welcome. I mean, the last one I can see there. Um, thank you, Zoe, for for posti uh, posting about uh, the NGA's work, the National Governance Association. I mentioned earlier on that that alignment and collaboration piece is really critical to us. So, for example, some of the resources we've provided for climate ambassadors are to help them navigate what kind of tools and resources exist, what kind of organisations and networks exist that they should be signposting education settings to, because the last thing that we want to do is duplicate the fantastic work that's going on across the sector. Um, a, because it's not efficient, and B, because it's really good quality stuff. So um, thank you for sharing those. And we'll talk a little bit more about resources shortly. I mentioned that Climate Ambassadors is just one of the programme, one of the programmes that the Department for Education has funded. And again, I saw in the Q&A there was a question about the funding mechanisms. So the Department for Education has funded directly the National Education Nature Park, Climate Ambassadors and the Sustainability Support for Education digital support hub but there's a wider ecosystem that we work with um, particularly with let's go zero the ashton campaign for getting um, all education settings to, to net zero um, and other supporters and partners too so i'm just going to introduce a couple of those at this stage particularly those that that are dfe funded because what we're trying to recognize is that it's quite a noisy landscape there's lo there's actually lots of support available to education settings across the country with their sustainability work um and what we need to do is make sure that we're helping education settings navigate that support so they can find the right people to work with for where they are at so we have a bit of a mantra amongst the sister projects that if you talk to one of us you talk to all of us because we do that work in terms of saying actually you've come to climate and but what you're really interested in is your nature the nature connection of your your estate so the nature park is the best place for you at this moment in time come back and um, we can support you with a climate ambassador at a future date so we're trying to create this kind of well-oiled ecosystem of support where education settings can access the right people the right organization in some cases the right funding for where they're where they're at now, I won't do as good um, a job as if we had um, some of the team from these organisations with us, but I will do my very best to uh, talk about the sister projects that we work with. Um, the first is sustainability support for education. We need to describe this as the digital support hub. So this is a free online service for education settings to help them understand where they're currently at with their sustainability and climate work and get signposted to bespoke quality assured trusted resources that will help support them to take action to further the four areas of a climate action plan so decarbonisation climate education biodiversity and adaptation and resilience 
So there's a QR code on the next slide. This is a really helpful overview of the service. Um, but education settings, any organisation with a URN, so a unique reference number, can access um, the Sustainability Support for Education Hub, can answer some questions, and then we'll get a kind of a profile of resources to help them develop their practice. And if you're an organisation that has resources that you think will help education settings to develop their sustainability practice, there's a mechanism for you to do that via the, the Sustainability Support for Education website too. So the Digital Support Hub is all about resources, trusted, high quality, science-based resources that can help education settings progress their practice. The National Education Nature Park is a fantastic concept which recognises the, the vast estate that collectively the education sector has. I think Juanita mentioned that if you stuck all the schools and nurseries together, you'd get an area twice the size of Greater Birmingham. So really substantial in terms of area. But the overarching goal of the Nature Park is to empower every young person in England to take action by making a positive difference to their own and to nature's future by developing a connection to nature by understanding the threats that nature's facing and also developing the skills and the agency to feel able to do something about it. Um, and the Nature Park is a really multifaceted project. Um, it has citizen science built in, it has different digital tools built in to help education settings and their learners map their natural environment. It has teaching resources that are all linked to the curriculum. So if you're a maths teacher, if you're a geography teacher, if you're an English teacher, there's key stage appropriate um, curriculum linked resources available to you. That's a growing collection um, and fundamentally working to transition our education setting from largely being grey to being green, to being great sites for both people and wildlife, um, both from a learning perspective, but also from a health perspective too. And you can see the green flashing dots on the screen here. This is just a really simple visual to show the number of settings that are engaging with the uh, nature park and its work. So you can see there's a real growing trend across the country. They've reached well over three and a half thousand settings now. They've been running a little bit longer than the Climate and Busters programme, um, but it really helps, I think, education settings. So this isn't just something that we're doing, but we're part of collective action. And then the final sister project that I wanted to talk to today was Let's Go Zero, which is a campaign to enable education settings to say yeah, we are on board with this agenda. We are working to become net zero by 2030. So there's a real ambition there. And as part of that campaign, Let's Go Zero have funded 30 climate action advisors. So the distinction here really is that a climate action advisor, this is their full time day job as opposed to a climate ambassador who is a volunteer. Um, and we are working really closely with Let's Go Zero again to make sure that the right people, whether it's a volunteer climate ambassador or a paid climate action advisor, um, is going into education settings to provide the support that they need. So it's tailored advice for that education setting, um, bespoke support for, for schools, for maths, for, for local authorities with an education remit, as well as dioceses, faith schools as well. Um, and we're really working closely with Let's Go Zero to make sure that we're kind of cross pollinating in terms of the work that we're doing and who's doing it. But there's a whole collective of projects and programmes that, like I say, are working together uh, in symbiosis to make sure that education settings fundamentally get the help that they need and want to progress their work. So just out of interest, now we've introduced kind of the suite of sister projects involved. There's another slider, and this is us being a little bit nosy, really, but we're interested in which of these schemes you've heard of before today's webinar. Um, this might inform future comms work that we're doing collectively, but I'm um, really interested to see who amongst um, the, the 60 odd of us here today have heard of these schemes. Um, and already that's quite reassuring, I think. I'll just leave a few more minutes for people to, to grab their phones and do the work here. Okay. The Nature Park launched a year ago. The Climate Ambassadors Programme had a dual launch, like I said earlier on, once in June, 
once in September. And sustainability support for education has had, a, again, a staggered launch since May. So this is, I think, quite reassuring, um, given the scale and the ambition of the projects um, and the scale of the, the public sector right, in terms of how many tens of thousands of people that are there um, that have a role. Um, who I'd like to think in a year or so, these numbers will be higher. Great. I'm going to pass over back to Jane. He's going to talk a little bit more about the different ways we're working with individuals as well as organisations to um, support the Climate Ambassadors programme. So, Jane, over to you. Thanks, Charlotte. Um, it's great to see that's um, that's a really pleasing level of awareness. So thank you. And it's um, it's really interesting considering the the diversity of the of the group. Um, thanks for that. So um, we're building relationships with employers and organisations in the sustainability and environmental sector across England, asking them to support climate ambassadors as part of their employee member volunteering schemes um, and organisations that we've worked with so far reporting that this supports their own sustainability goals as well as enhancing employee member engagement. So why do people want to get involved? I mean, you you identified um, many of these areas early earlier around wanting to affect meaningful change in your local communities to insp inspire and support young people, enhance your own skills, support your own um, child's school and tackle real world sustainability and climate challenges. Um, and so. Really, why do, why do we want those kind of uh, that involvement at organisational level as well? I mean, you heard from Juanita earlier on that um, the reach of this project and the commitment behind it um, is really quite significant. Um, and we, we'd really love you to consider um, getting involved with um, climate ambassadors, either personally or from an organisational perspective. As I mentioned, it's a structured and purposeful activity which upskills staff and volunteers um, perhaps can um, enable colleagues to get involved in volunteering programmes who perhaps haven't found something in the programme that you offer that quite appeals to them um, and also to be able to make that connection into um, your local community particularly edu the education sector and really um, uh, yeah, I think I think a big a big part of the um, uh, the big part of the scheme um, is really to, for um, to kind of make those connections into those social value goals that you might have, and um, to really kind of demonstrate that you're connected with your community, and you know you're you're also a good a good place to work as well. Um, so next slide, please, Charlotte. Um, so we want to build relationships with organisations that have sustainability at the heart of their operations, um, supporting employees or associates to take part through a volunteering scheme, um, perhaps. Um, and um, it's a great opportunity to focus on that kind of, you know, that civic engagement and ESG work. And this slide outli outlines some of the ways that um, we can really support and recognise your commitment. And given the diversity of delegates on the call, we're really keen to explore how we can offer bespoke webinars, materials and support to your colleagues to really work with you to pick out those touch points of relevance between your work and interest and what educations are looking for from this programme. And we're also really keen to support this network and look at how we can best add value to the wider work that you're that you're going to be developing together. Um, next slide, please, Charlotte. Um, and really, our ask at this kind of early early stage, as many as, as many of you were identifying, this is this is perhaps the first time that you've really heard a lot of detail about this program in particular. Um, I think our, our major ask at the moment is around that kind of advocacy, outreach, support, finding out more. That's our main call out for you today um, and really that hopefully this is the start of a conversation with you. Um, 
And, you know, there's some ideas again on this slide, and we're really happy to explore different models that align with your objectives and what your what your level of interest really is. Um, a couple of recent examples at these very early stages of the programme are Engineering UK, are a member of our steering group, for example. They recently published a bespoke blog piece on their website. Um, we're about to do so with, um, I can't remember what the acronym is. Um, it's the British British and Irish Zoos Association, and massive apologies for them for misremembering their, their correct name. Um, the Institute for Outdoor Learning published a news article and have invited us to present at a workshop. NEU have invited us to speak at their forthcoming conference. So it's a lot of it is about awareness raising and really kind of making those connections, those relevant connections, I suppose. Um, next slide, Charlotte. So if you are a future climate ambassador, as I mentioned, the sign up process is through the STEM learning platform. We have a range of materials to walk you through the process to support. I there may well be um, members of um, the call today who are already STEM ambassadors. It's very easy to add climate ambassadors as a scheme within your ambassador attributes, if you like. Um, and um, there's a lot of support to kind of get you started, to get you engaged and so on. Um, and I will hand back to Charlotte. Thanks. Thanks, Jane. We've got to that wonderful part of the session where there's ideas aplenty coming through the, the chat and through Q&A. Just a reminder, if you can, if it's a question, try and put that in the Q&A section of Teams rather than the chat. I know it's just for uh, administration, but it really will help us keep on track of making sure we do answer all of the questions. Um, and for some of the ideas, you've you've come on to a great part. Um, you've anticipated our next question. So we're interested in your thoughts. Obviously, Jane's presented some ways that you as an individual can get involved in climate ambassadors. We're also really keen to work with organisations, whether that's a supporter organisations or whether that's to align different approaches um, with education settings. I saw a question about kind of the volunteering element. Can this be done on work time? Absolutely it can if your employer has a volunteering scheme. Um, and again, we're trying to find those connections with organisations and employers that, that encourage their staff to volunteer as part of their time um, and so we can build those links too but we're really interested in your thoughts on ways that your work your areas of interest professionally can connect um, with the climate ambassadors program um, and this is basically our to-do list i suppose off the back of this call in terms of things that we can pick up and make sure we're following up with you on through uh, the collective's uh, network and through the, the the Good News Hub as well. So I can see some of you typing away and I can see some of these in the chat already in terms of council working groups promoting climate ambassadors through their networks um, getting uh, involvement in these programmes into council action plans for staff and communities. Um, I can see these coming through. So lots of ideas here. So Biodiversity net gain goals of local authorities connected to schools, absolutely, with the nature park. I think there's lots of opportunities. I can see this as a common narrative about connecting with local authorities. Our regional hub teams have, actually, I've been told off for this before. I've asked you to do something. I'm going to be quiet for a minute before I keep chatting because I know it's difficult to, to type and listen. So apologies. I'll let you do the slido before I continue talking.
Okay. I'm now going to start talking in the interest of time, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of space to, to, um, to contemplate. So we've got all sorts of ideas here. And what's interesting, I think, is that some of them are from you as individuals. So some of you host podcasts, some of you are trained facilitators of different sustainability um, training, for things like climate fresh, carbon literacy. So you individually are starting to think about ways that you can connect to the programme and would be delighted to have you as volunteers. So thank you so much for those offers. And then some are more about kind of your your workplace and about building links between your apprenticeship schemes and their training providers, about building links between your local authorities, climate work and its local education settings. Um, the fact that you already have networks that could reach education settings that we could tap into. This is really fantastic. Um, do keep your ideas coming. We will harvest them and we will collate them and, and think through how we take action on them following the webinar. Um, thank you so much. There's lots here. And like I say, this isn't a one way offer. You know, we're not just asking of, of you something. We'd really like to make sure that our work is aligned well, both nationally and regionally with other existing sustainability um, and education initiatives. So um, if there's things that you think should be on our radar, we very much welcome those as well. So in the last um, eight minutes of the webinar, um, we're going to cover some of the Q&A that have been raised. Um, I'm also going to make sure that you've got our contact details. Now, there's been quite a few questions about what we're going to share with you following the session. Just to reiterate that you will get a copy of the recording, a copy of the slides we've used, you'll get a synopsis of all the links that we've shared to different initiatives and resources, um, and you'll also get the contact details of your local regional support hubs. If you work for a national organisation, Jane's your lady. But if you're if you work for a council, if you work for a regional setup, then it's your regional hub that you, that we'd, we'd encourage you to get in touch with, and we'll share the contact details of each of those as well. So, for example, yesterday I was up in Newcastle. Alan Stephen run the regional um, hub for the northeast, so they would be the best people for you to connect with. So we'll make sure you have the contact details, the resources. We will also write up the Q and A recognising that we probably won't get to all of them um, in the last few minutes of the session. So I'm going to start at the top of the list because that's the way that my simple mind works. And some that were asked earlier on, um, we've answered in writing already, but again, we'll share those with you. So are schools and colleges being matched with the right ambassadors? Are you someone that can fill the needs of that school? Yes, Claire, that's exactly how it works. So that's one of the key pieces of work that regional hub managers do with the support of the STEM learning platform is to make sure that we're, we're matchmaking well so that the right skill sets, the right experience are being um, sent to the right schools, both in terms of ambassadors, but also in terms of the projects that we think are best suited to a school uh, or an education setting, depending on where it is at in their sustainability work. Um, you've also asked whether we're setting up communities of ambassadors within areas so that they can pool ideas and skills. Again, that's uh, facilitated through the STEM learning platform. There's an online community for all ambassadors to talk to one another. Um, regional hub managers are also doing some work to enhance those kind of communication links so that where things work really well, we're sharing that practice. Where things work less well, we're sharing that too. It's really important that we're learning from what doesn't work as well as what does work. Um, there's a number of different things around carbon literacy, climate fresque, other um, kind of workshops. Now at the moment our focus is really on helping support education settings develop and deliver climate action plans. A core part of those climate action plans may indeed be to engage their school community to deliver different trainings to help develop climate education and skills perspectives, in which case those workshops are exactly the kind of things that, that settings um, may need. So if you're already trained up to deliver those, that's music to our ears. And just a reminder that as well as you know, volunteer ambassadors conducting training, there's also a suite of training available to climate ambassadors so you can develop your skills and knowledge in different areas too. Um, Becky, you've asked a question. When signing up as a climate ambassador, is there a field to complete which organisation you work with so that organisations can also be aware of the number of active climate ambassadors? 
This is a bit of a techie question, so I really hope I get it right. And again, I'm going to make sure that we, we write up the answer to the questions. But you sign up as an ambassador first, settings also register, and then we match make. Um, so if you're already doing work with education settings that you think could come under the Climate Ambassadors kind of scheme, there are ways we can retrospectively report that. Um, but again, that would be done best in relationship with your regional hub manager to make sure we're not double counting to make sure that that we understand what work is being done as a result of Department for Education's funding. But it, the simple answer is yes, we're making sure that we're tracking how many ambassadors we have, how many education settings um, are on board, what the activities they're doing together are and what impact that's having most importantly. I fear I haven't answered your question very well because you've put your hand up, but that's great. Do come along Becky, it would be lovely to hear you. I'm just going to turn the mic settings on. Over to you. Thank you so much and thank you for all of this. It's been absolutely brilliant. What I meant was um, when we're, we're the environment agency and when our mm -hmm. people sign up to be STEM ambassadors, they tick a box to say they work with the environment agency. And so that way we're able to see who who works for the environment agency is involved in that activity. So I just wanted to check that the same thing um, happens when you sign up for this too. I see exactly yeah, if, what you mean. Should I, sorry, if I just Thank you. jump in on that one, Charlotte. So, yeah, I mean, you, and you will know from that, Becky, that you've got access to the social value data that kind of is behind that. that yeah. Um, yeah. So if you have, if an organisation has over 25 um, ambassadors, you can choose to enter a data sharing agreement with STEM Learning, which gives you access to a lot of um, data where you can see the activities of your staff, essentially. Yep. And it gives you social value metrics behind that, which is a fantastic resource. Exactly. Um, yeah. Um, and essentially, Climate Ambassadors are a subset of STEM Ambassadors. So with your existing STEM Ambassador um cohort you can add climate ambassadors as a scheme um which okay. this sounds very abstruse and technical but it's it's just and it's um about agreeing to data share as well with Thank us you. so i'm very happy to pick that up in more detail if that's um that sounds like that's a big cohort for you yeah thank you lovely i'm going to answer two more and then we're going to wrap up but like I say, there is a commitment from us to make sure all answers, all questions go answered. So we'll include the kind of written up Q&A as part of the follow up. So um, how do we arrange for you to come and promote the ambassador programme within our networks? Um, it depends whether it's a local network or a regional network. If it's a region, uh, regional network, then your regional hub manager is the person to contact and we'll be sharing their details shortly. Um, if it's a national network, then Jane's, Jane's your lady. So um, her email address is on your screen. So do please contact her. Katie, you've asked as somebody not involved in schools education at all, how the links made between volunteers and schools. We don't expect our climate ambassadors to be going knocking on the school gates to say, hello, can I come and help you? That's very much the job of the scheme, of our Marcoms, of the regional hub managers. So once you have registered as a climate ambassador, we then do that matchmaking um, to help you find an education setting that's suitable for you and your skill set and your expertise, um, who already knows that the climate ambassador program exists and have asked for support. So um, we do that. I don't think I should call it matchmaking, but I'm going to. We do that matchmaking for you. I'm sorry we haven't got to all of the questions. We will answer them in writing. Um, we've come to the end of the session this afternoon and I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you for, for rocking up and for engaging so um, wholeheartedly. Ian, is there anything that you want to say before we close? Just to say, um, you know, I, I have done this kind of stuff on my own before and um, it is really hard to get into schools and it's hard to generate material and it's hard to know where you're going to be pitching things and what the conditions are going to be like when you go in. Um, and just to say that, you know, having all of that hard work done for you and also getting some accreditation out of it, it's like it's just a huge bonus and, you know, really lowers the bar on what's needed to do this kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, if you're having any doubts, you know, please at least just register and have have a look and, uh, you know, um, you know, join the community and ask some questions because um, it's, uh, yeah, making this easier is obviously a tremendous bonus for schools um, and being able to, you know, engage with children as well is, um, yeah, it's, it's a massive opportunity and it's, and it's one that's really rewarding. 
Um, so yeah, just a call for pe people to you know really have a go. Um, and also remember to join the uh, the Cross Government Climate Hub if you get a chance. Um, you know we will get any questions answered that people have on there about anything. Um, and and also um, yeah, we'll be doing a, a wrap up meeting about this um, in future. And if you want to be involved in further discussion to see how this you can collaborate on this um, with the Climate Ambassadors Project, then then do give us a shout. Um, it'd be great to as a national kind of group. It'd be great to join up with as many people as possible and see what's going on in as many places as possible. Um, I know Becky and Fahad, I didn't engage with you before this, some apologies for that, um, but I know that you, that's something that you're interested in doing as well. So just to say thanks very much to Jane and thanks very much to Charlotte. Um, and yeah, thanks very much to everyone who came on the call. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thanks.